Hello, today's topic is yield curve. A yield curve gives you interest rates across time on financial instruments that are the exact same other than the time to maturity. Okay, so a typical yield curve looks like this. Here's time to maturity and here's the interest rate or yield to maturity. Now, these financial instruments that we're going to be graphing on this yield curve have all the same properties, the exact same, other than the length of time to maturity. That's the only thing that differentiates between these. And so you could have a 30-day instrument, six-month, one-year, five-year, ten-year, etc. Okay, and we could keep going. Okay, and what the yield curve typically shows us is that over time, this is upward sloping. So this would be an upward sloping upward sloping yield curve. And what that shows us is that which do you prefer? Do you prefer something that's short term or long term? If you hold everything else the same, you would prefer, prefer short, short term because the short term is more definite, less risky. And so therefore, as time to maturity increases, therefore the return or the yield to maturity that you require in order to hold that asset goes up. And so therefore, this upward sloping yield curve. Okay, and that's the typical case. Now, let's go through some different, there's four different types of yield curves or four different shapes you can get. Okay, and we're going to go through each of these shapes and explain when they will occur. Okay, the first one, as we just said, upward sloping. This is our upward sloping. This is the typical case. Probably 90% of the time, this is what the yield curve looks like. Okay, and this is going to occur whenever interest rates are low, but not overly low. They're, they're good, okay, what we would consider good. Okay, upward sloping. Now, you can also have downward sloping. Okay, and this does not occur often. Okay, this is not typical. Okay, a downward sloping yield curve occurs whenever there is very high interest rates. very high interest rates. Now similar to this downward sloping you can also get a humped a humped yield curve. Now realize with a humped yield curve it is showing that in the short term up to this point interest rate is still going up but at some point the expectation is that they will go down. And so again this is still occurring when you have high interest rates but the expectation is that they will go down in the future. Now you can also have a flat yield curve. Okay, and but again, this is not typical as well as the humped. This is not typical. But it does occur occasionally. Okay, depending upon what the expectation of interest rates are. The flat occurs when interest rates are moderate. Not high, not low, something in between. Okay, so those are our four shapes of the yield curve. Now, there are also some facts that we'd like to be able to explain. So, facts to be explained. Because we're going to introduce some theories on interest rate, interest rate determination, and then we're going to compare those theories to these facts. So let's get it straight as to what our facts are. First one is that interest rate on bonds at different maturities move together. Interest rate on bonds of different maturities move together. 
And you'll recall from the very first chapter that we talked about the interest rate, all interest rates move together, whether they're government bonds, short-term bonds, long-term bonds, or corporate bonds. They move together. And that's why in economics we talk about the interest rate, even though there are hundreds of them. The next one is when short-term rates are low, interest rates are low, the yield curve is likely to be upward sloping. Okay, and the reason here is if short-term rates are low, well, which direction do we expect them to go in the future? Where if they're already low, how low is low, let's say as low as we would think they would go, then the only direction they can go is up. And so therefore, a yield curve would be upward sloping. Now, the reverse of this, we'll write it in black, when short-term rates are high, the yield curve is likely to be downward sloping. So realize this is helping to explain those graphs that we just did. We did an upward sloping and a downward sloping. We're trying to explain when each would occur. So that's what number two does. And then finally, the third fact that we want to be able to explain is yield curves are almost always upward sloping. Okay, so these are the facts we want to be able to explain with these theories we're going to introduce. We want interest rates of different bonds, of different maturities to move together. If short-term rates are low, we want our yield curve upward sloping. If short-term rates are high, we want our yield curve to be downward sloping. Yield curves are almost always upward sloping. Okay, so the three theories We're going to cover expectations, we're going to cover segmented market, and we're going to recover preferred habitat. slash liquidity premium. Okay, so those are our three theories that we're going to introduce to explain interest rates, and then we're going to test them against the facts that we observe in the real world to see which of these is valid, and if they are not valid as to why they're not. Okay, so the first one is the expectations. Expectations theory of interest rate determination. Okay, in the expectations theory, all it says is that long-term interest rates are a moving average of short-term rates. Okay, what do we expect to have happen in the future? Well, it's based on what's happened in the short run. So, for example, let's say that you have a one-year bond in 1999, another one-year bond in 2000, and a one-year bond in 2001. Okay, so you're, these are three separate bonds, each for one year to maturity. And let's say that this is paying 5%. This you expect to have pay 6% and this one 7%. And let's say that in 1999 you also had a choice of a three-year bond that would go for three years. Okay, so this is your choice as an investor. You can make three one-year investments or one three-year. 
Now the question is, that three-year, that's what we're going to term as our long-term bond. Well, that long-term bond interest rate is a moving average of the short-term rates. So therefore, this would be 6%. Okay, all we did was average the three single-year bonds that are the, during the same time period as the three-year. So all we're doing is averaging. We're going to average the short-term rates to come up with the long-term rates. That's what the expectations theory is saying to do. Now let's look at our facts. The first fact is interest rates move together. Long and short-term. Well, does that work? Well, if you're taking a moving average of something, sure, they're going to move together. Because anytime those short-term rates start to move up, that long-term average is going to start to move up. So this is a yes. This fact holds. Okay? Our second fact, uh, if short-term rates are low, then yield curve upward sloping. If short-term rates are low, the yield curve is upward sloping. Well, if short-term rates are low, what do we expect them to do? We expect them to go up. And so therefore, the moving average of those numbers that are going up are going to go up. And so therefore, the yield curve would be upward sloping. So this holds. And the reverse of this, if short-term rates are high, then we expect them to go down, and therefore the yield curve would be downward sloping. Okay, so it works both ways for the same argument. Now let's look at fact three. Yield curves almost always upward sloping. Well, if when short-term rates are low, you expect them to go up, and if short-term rates are high, you expect them to go down, then therefore you expect them to come up to some median, and so therefore your yield curve is not going to be upward sloping, it's going to be flat. So the expectations theory explains a flat yield curve because the tendency for short-term rates to go up if they're low, go down if they're high, all you do is get some average average and therefore your yield curve is going to be flat. And so the expectations theory holds for the first two facts but not for the third. Okay, next we want to do segmented markets. Now we're going to do segmented markets. With segmented market, we mean that our long-term and short-term markets are completely segmented, completely different. completely different, that there is no substitution between these two markets, that you are either in the market for a short-term bond or you're in the market for a long-term bond. This is saying that with the segmented market that they are not substitutes at all. Now, let's go back for a moment because I failed to say with the expectations theory, Realize the assumption here is that short-term and long-term bonds or whatever financial instrument you want to talk about, short-term and long-term are perfect substitutes. Okay, perfect substitutes. Okay, now with the segmented market, though, we're saying they're not substitutes at all. 
Okay, so let's look at segmented market in regards to our facts. Okay, fact one, interest rates move together. Well, with the segmented market, we're saying these two markets have nothing to do with each other. So therefore, they don't necessarily move together. So this is a big no here. They do not move together because they have nothing to do with each other. They are completely segmented. Okay. Now, the next one, when short-term rates are short-term rates low that we expect an upward sloping yield curve. Well, if short-term rates are low, well, on the yield curve, we're comparing short-term to long-term financial instruments or bonds. We've said they have nothing to do with each other, so it doesn't matter whether short-term rates are low or not, according to this simple theory. Now realize this is just a theory, it doesn't necessarily apply, and that's what we're showing, that it doesn't apply. Okay, so this is a no, and vice versa. If short-term rates are high, it says we want it to be able to show that the yield curve would be downward sloping. Well, the two have nothing to do with each other, so it's just no. Okay, now yield curves almost always slope upwards. typically upward sloping. Okay, that's the fact we want to see if it holds. Well, short term, long term, in the segmented market, we say they are completely different. However, holding everything else constant, which do you prefer? You still prefer short term over long term, even if the markets are segmented. So therefore, this would be an upward sloping. Because even though you're either in the short-term market or the long-term market, we can still allow that, hey, if you're in that long-term market, you're going to expect some type of premium. Okay? So that one is a yes for the third one. Okay? But so far, with the expectations and the segmented, realize we're not doing too good here holding our facts or explaining our facts. So that's why we have the next one. Okay? Preferred habitat. liquidity premium theory. Okay, here, this is the best one. This is the one that's going to explain all our facts and make the most sense for how you and I think. This is the expectations theory plus, okay, and that's where, what the difference, plus a liquidity premium. Okay, so this is going to be the same thing as the expectations theory. However, they are no longer perfect substitutes, but they are substitutes. Short term and long term are substitutes, but not perfect. But not perfect, meaning that Yes, you'll look at the short-term market, the long-term market. You don't really care which market, but you're going to require a premium if it's the long-term market. Okay. So again, we're going to do the moving average out of the expectations theory, but then we're going to add in a liquidity premium. So now let's go through our facts. And this is for... Preferred habitat, liquidity premium. Okay, fact one. Uh, interest rates move together. Well, just like with the expectations theory. Yeah, they're going to move together because we're figuring long-term rates by taking the average of the short-term rates. Whatever the short-term rates are doing, that's what the long-term rates are going to do whenever you take that moving average. So this is a yes for the same reason as we had for the expectations theory. Okay, when short-term rates are lo low, then 
yield curve upward sloping. Well, if interest rates are low, what way do you expect them to go? Up. If you're taking a moving average of an interest rate that's going up, what do you get? You get something that's upward sloping. And so this is a yes for the exact same reason as we had for the expectations theory. Okay, and the reverse of number two, if short-term rates are high, then the yield curve is downward sloping because if they're high, you expect them to go down. If you're taking a moving average of a number that's going down over time, then you're going to get something that's downward sloping. Okay, so we're good there. Three, yield curves almost always slope upwards. Okay, so do we get an upward sloping yield curve? This is where the other one fell apart, the expectations theory. Okay, this one is good because what do we have? If we were to draw, if we had just the expectations, okay, expectations gives us this. The expectations theory says, hey, on average it's going to go out, have some moderate level. Okay, but now we have a liquidity premium. So you can think about this as being the liquidity premium. So now, with the preferred habitat, okay, now let's draw this together. Your yield curve looks like this. Here's time, here's interest rate. Oh, it's upward sloping. Because you're combining the expectations theory now with this liquidity premium. And so therefore, you'll typically get an upward sloping yield curve because of that liquidity premium. Okay, so those are our three theories. We had expectations, segmented, and then preferred habitat slash liquidity premium. Realize expectations couldn't explain an upward sloping yield curve, just a flat one. The segmented market couldn't explain anything other than an upward sloping yield curve. Finally, we get the preferred habitat liquidity premium theory. It's able to explain that interest rates move together, that if interest rates are expected to go up, we're going to get an upward sloping. If they're expected to go down, we're going to get a downward sloping. And finally, the third fact, which is that you're typically going to have an upward sloping yield curve, and that is because of that liquidity premium. So those are our three theories to explain interest rate determination.